Morning, church. How are we going? Good. That's good. We sort this out. Well, happy Mother's Day. I want to extend my uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, uh, grandmothers, and uh, those who play mother roles uh, in, in our church and in our society. Uh, everyone, uh, or a lot of our mothers can, can play those roles. Whether it's just welcoming one of the kids or knowing their names or whatever it is, uh, demonstrating the love that our mothers have shown us, uh, we can do that throughout the year. So we want to celebrate you and uh, wish you all a happy Mother's Day. We're starting our series uh, in, the, in May, uh, our May Mission Month series. Uh, as we saw in the video, uh, it's crossing the street. And so uh, Baptist Mission Australia, uh, formerly Global Interaction, uh, if you knew last year they, they, they switched their name and uh, it's now Baptist Mission Australia and, uh, and so they've set out this as a call for uh, the hundreds of Baptist churches across Australia. So we're joining them in this. And so when we speak about mission and evangelism and kind of crossing the street, for some of us, this really excites us. Now, for some of us, when we talk about mission and, and, and evangelism, it, it, it really gets us going, really excites us. For me, it excites me, and I know some of the other evangelists and, and those who have seen uh, great fruit in this area, uh, it really excites us. But for some of you, I, I, I realize that when we talk about mission and evangelism, um, you often remember about the times that maybe you've tried and, and it just hasn't worked, or you've shared and, and it's just... It just hasn't worked, and, and it's, it's a bit difficult for you when we talk about these things and, and when you're encouraged to do these things, that, that mission and evangelism is a difficult hurdle for you. And so I want to just put that out there and because um, some of you maybe haven't seen the effectiveness or seen God at work through you the way in which he can work. Uh, but I believe that, that through this series, hopefully, that, that God will give you a fresh vision of what mission and evangelism is, that, that you will see and experience that, that God can use everyone in this role, from the smallest things to the largest things. I love on that video that, you know, when we talk about evangelism and crossing the street, uh, that, lady, that old lady Jan is just got a, got a chocolate scroll, went across the road and had tea. Like, that's evangelism. Like, simple things like that, the way in which we just connect and demonstrate love, like our mothers do, demonstrate love, those sort of things are part of the mission that we're called to, and you are, in fact, doing those things. So hopefully this will help you, this series, understand a little bit more what it's really about, understand what it means uh, to reach people, as we call in our church, on our front lines. Reach those people, understand what it means to simply cross the street. On Easter Sunday, we, uh, if you were here with us, we, we explored John uh, chapter 20. We heard stories about the way in which Jesus died and, and rose from the dead. We also saw that, that through these acts, he saved us. His death and resurrection, he saved us. And he saved us for a specific reason. It wasn't just because he, he loves us so much, which he does, but he saved us and he called us uh, to partner with him in a specific reason. I want to draw you to uh, John chapter 20. It's on the screen. Verse 19, I read this on Easter Sunday. It, it says, that Sunday evening, the day Jesus rose from the dead, the evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side, and they were filled with joy. And when they saw the Lord again, he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. See, one of the purposes of his death and resurrection was our salvation, but it was also to declare the salvation that Jesus offers to others. The sending was in integral of the resurrection. It was part of what it was about. And in that passage, that short little passage, we see Jesus do three significant things. 
the first one, he re removed the barrier that was getting in the way of sharing with the disciples. You know, as we read, uh, the doors were locked, and Jesus just seemed to appear in the room. Now, Jesus was in his resurrected body, but he was still human at this time. So how he did this, we actually do not know. But what we do know is that he overcame that barrier. And so sometimes when it comes to um, even just crossing the street or sharing the gospel on our front lines, there is a barrier in the way. There's something, maybe it's, maybe it's fear or just convenience or there's something in the way. And now I learned recently, um, and I probably, and some probably already knew it already, that, uh, that God has given me the gift of evangelism. Now, some of you may have known that already, uh, but I probably only just learned it recently that it was actually a gifting. And so you would expect someone with the gift of evangelism, evangel being evangelistic and sharing the gospel comes naturally through that gift and that it's easy for me. It is not. It is still hard to overcome those simple barriers, to go and speak with your neighbors and to go and share a simple message, simply to overcome that little barrier. It's, it's difficult. So when it comes to mission, when it comes to sharing, you know, for Jan on that, on that video there, to buy a scroll and to go across the street, it seems like a simple act, but I'm sure it was difficult for her to do that. Um, now, some of you have large streets, and so it seems like crossing the street is a bit further than, than others. The, the previous house we lived in, you could probably fit two cars across the street, so it was a little bit closer to get to the neighbors. But the house that we live in now, it's, it's about four car lengths. So it seems like a, you know, like a mile just to go and cross the street and to share the gospel. But we see that in this, Jesus simply removed the barrier. And, and Jesus can, in our interactions, do the same thing. Remove the barrier that gets in the way from us sharing the gospel. Remove the barrier that, that gets in the way of us sharing doesn't make it any easier the next time sometimes. But overcoming hurdles and overcoming the barriers is part of the work in which we are called to and which we are sent to do. And so in that, we see that he also declared peace in the house. Various interactions, Jesus declared peace uh, over the house. It seems to be an evangelistic strategy or a mission strategy to declare peace. Uh, it is often a welcoming in that culture, but it went beyond that. It's almost like inviting God into that space to him to speak and to move and to declare peace over the house. So we see that Jesus can do that as well. And what's key in this passage is that he sent his disciples. The Father said, As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. A key part of us being saved by Jesus is being sent like the Son, being sent like Jesus. And now Jesus had his disciples in the room, and I'm sure some had the gift of evangelism. But I'm sure some were very timid and very closed off and just liked to stay behind the scenes in that discipleship group. But he didn't pinpoint them out and didn't say, okay, I'm going to send uh, you and uh, maybe, maybe you and, and maybe you, and the rest of you, you can just kind of do some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. No, he sent them all. All of them were sent on the mission. All of them had a role within the mission of evangelism and being sent. So biblically, we need to understand that we are all sent. We're all sent to cross the street. We're all sent to build bridges with uh, those who don't know Jesus. We are sent to meet people where they are and to share the good news of Jesus in ways that make sense to them. We're sent across the street to build bridges, to meet people where they are, and to share the good news of Jesus in a way that makes sense to them. 
There are those in our community that have the evangelistic gift, but they are not in the right place to share with your neighbours. They are not in the right place to share with your work colleagues. You are. You are called in that place. You are positioned there. And if I came in with a gift of evangelism and shared the gospel, it wouldn't be as good as you, who may not have the gift of evangelism, just talking about Jesus or just talking about your faith, just talking about what you did on the weekend. That contains more power because God has placed you there. God has positioned you there and you have the connections already in that place. And you can share the good news in a way that makes sense to them, not in a way that sounds like weird religious stuff when we talk about some of these crazy things that we follow. Being sent people is is part of our identity of following Jesus. It's part of our identity of who we are. You cannot separate that to different gifts of that things that we have. It is part of who we are that when you decided to follow Jesus, you, you subscribed to and you became a follower of Jesus and you became a sent one. You became sent just like Jesus was sent. You can't separate it. Being sent by Jesus and serving in his mission field is part of who you are. It's not a small part off to the side, which a small group of people do. It is for all of us to do, being sent like Jesus, being sent by the Father, having an important role in our community. Each of us has that, to share the good news, to say peace into different situations, to pray over people, to to minister into them. Because Jesus has sent you. It carries a significant amount of weight. Our Lord and Saviour has sent us into the world. That where you are, where you have found yourself, in your home, where you bought your house, in your workplace, the friends that you have, Jesus has sent you into that. And he declares that, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And that is exactly what he has done. However, in that space, it's encouraging to be that, that we're not responsible for God's mission. It's God's mission. It's God that is working amongst our community. Our responsibility, and God graciously invites us to partner with him in this, to partner with him in his mission. He's already at work in the place in which you already are. He's already encountering people and sharing the good news with people. We simply are partnering with him and just sharing some, some little things. Just being there in the presence can sometimes be incredibly powerful. And the fact that God is with us in this mission should be a great encouragement to us. It should help us to, to overcome some of those barriers of, uh, maybe a, a sense of insecurity of, you know, maybe I don't know the Bible enough or maybe I just don't know how to pray enough or I just, just don't know what to say in these situations. God is with you and it's God's mission. God alone is responsible for his mission. God alone is responsible for bringing the world into, to, to save him, to save the world. God alone is responsible. And God is already at work where you are and we simply are partnering with him in that work, just like Jesus did. Jesus showed us an example of real being prayerful and being guided by the Father. There are so many different things that Jesus could have done that he didn't do. He changed his directions because he knew that God was working in those areas. And so just like Jesus did, we we are partnering with our Father, with God. And as we ponder within our identity as being sent people, it is intrinsically entangled in the love of God. Our identity as loved people by the Father is part of who we are. At Jesus' baptism, 
It was almost the, the moment in which G God the Father sent Jesus out to do his work, positioned him for the specific job. We see these, we hear these words and we read them. It said, a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. At Jesus' baptism, the father declares to his son, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. You bring me great joy. And see, Jesus' identity as being a sent person is secure as one loved by the Father. As one loved by the, for, the Father. So we as sent people, following Jesus in his footsteps, following the Father's path, our identity of being a loved one is secure in him. Some of the barriers of, of overcoming and sharing the gospel is an identity barrier sometimes. What happens if they think I'm strange? What happens if I don't say the right words? What happens if I muddle it up and I get it all wrong? What happens if I say something that's just blatantly false in these moments? What happens if I share the gospel and they just simply don't understand it. What happens if they ask me a question that I don't know what it is? I might look like a fool. What happens if I share with my neighbors, I bought this house and I share the gospel with my neighbors and because of the gospel that I share with them, they hate me. What happens? Some of these questions are barriers to us sharing the good news. You know, what happens if they just dislike me? These are genuine barriers that are getting in the way of God's mission. And these very questions are the same questions that I've thought as well. What happens if I do this? And I'll tell you today that these, these are lies, these questions. These are lies from Satan getting in the way of you being who you are getting in the way of being who you are. They're distracting you away from God's purpose in your life, from your identity. You don't have to listen to these questions that, that prevent you from sharing the gospel. They don't have to listen to prevent these questions from just being who you are in that space. You are loved by God. Your identity is secure in that the moment you believe Jesus. It is secure. These questions and these barriers are to distract you from the mission. You are a son and a daughter of God, just like Jesus. You bring him great joy. You bring God the Father great joy. And it's within that identity, it's within that security that we can step out. It's within that identity that we can reach people on our front lines. That we can simply cross the street. It doesn't matter what they think of us. It doesn't matter if I stuff up. God is gracious and he is merciful and he can use exactly the muddled words I say for his glory and for his work. It's within that understanding of being sent and with our identity secure within God that in those spaces we are empowered by the Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. One of the amazing things is that, that God partners with us. In that interaction on Resurrection Sunday, before the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost had been poured out upon everyone, Jesus says these words, See, then he breathed on them. That's not COVID safe. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
You see, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Our muddled up words that we think in our mind and things that we say and our insecurities, um, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us. Whether we have the gift of evangelism, whether we don't, we are all empowered by the Spirit. It's part of who we are. And so our muddled up words can be translated into something beautiful through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our muddled up words, our, our misunderstandings of the Scriptures can be effective. You know, our strength across the street, our strength to share on our front lines comes from this Holy Spirit, the power that the Holy Spirit has. It is through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit work within us. That is God active and living in us, sharing this good news. It's the Holy Spirit that reminds us of our identity in these spaces. It's the Holy Spirit that reminds us that we are loved and that we are sent by God. Remind us that we're not sent alone. The Holy Spirit lives within us. That as we go out, as we go into our work, and as we go into our house, we have the Holy Spirit. Not only are we in partnership with each other, but we also have the Holy Spirit as our guide. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. It is our comforter in these moments. And Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to his disciples saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Can I encourage you the same today is to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive it. Rely on it. Use it. God has given this as a gift for you. That the moment you were saved, the Holy Spirit entered into your life. The moment you were saved and gave your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit entered into your life. And as we continue to live for Him, as we continue to allow the Holy Spirit into different areas of our lives. We should allow him, we should receive him in all areas, allowing him to mold us, to guide us in these places. You see, we need the Holy Spirit at work in our lives to develop the fruits of the Spirit, develop the gifts that God has given us, to simply cultivate Christ-likeness and to open our eyes to the people of peace. Open our eyes to those on our front lines. And it's through this powering of the Holy Spirit that we can come alongside our communities. We can overcome the barriers. We can speak peace into a situation that's in turmoil, a situation that is messy. We can speak peace into that and be sent into those places. Once you overcome, overcome through the power of God that barrier of crossing the street. Once you come to grips with your identity in Christ as somebody loved by God and seek to be living an empowered life by the Holy Spirit, sharing the gospel simply becomes who we are, simply becomes what we were doing. It's what we were meant to do. Sharing the gospel, sharing the good news is what we are meant to do. It's part of who we are. It's part of each and every person. It doesn't have to come through a uh, you know, well-organized program. It doesn't have to come through a well-organized and thought-out speech. It comes through simple things that you do. Food that you share. Time that you spend with people. It comes through various simple things, the gospel and people understand that there's something different about you because your identity is secure in the love of Jesus, in the love of the Father, that the Holy Spirit is working. People can sense that. People know that. Sharing the gospel becomes who we are. It becomes what we do in the everyday. Let me pray for you. 
Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we, uh, we receive your spirit today. Lord, help us to come to grips of our understanding. Lord, help us just like you sent Jesus. Lord, send us. Send us, Lord. Help us, our identity, to be secure in the love of God. Lord, as you overcome the barriers, Lord, help us to overcome the barriers in our lives. But we know that you're working. We know that you're there, but it's often difficult. So help us to overcome those barriers. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, by your grace and mercy, work amongst us. Work amongst us as your people. This is what we pray. Amen.